I built a contraption. It's a spool of wire wrapped around a block of wood, dunked in a bucket of water, and strapped to a lipo. That seem like a good idea? <laughs> Seems like a good idea to me. That's the kind of thing you gotta do if you wanna test these batteries at real current ratings as opposed to some easy little 20 amp test on the bench. And I've done it, and I'm gonna tell you the results. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna thank the commenter who suggested this method to me over the light bulb method that I was using in the previous test. Uh, the light bulb method is hot and it's bright and it's annoying, and this one is superior in every way I can think of. Now this is steel wire, and that was the real insight that the commenter gave me. Steel wire, you might think that you hook a, a battery up with a piece of wire and it makes a dead short, right? But steel wire has much higher resistance than the copper wire we usually use, and that's why we use copper wire. So you get a long enough length of steel wire and you can actually pull 20 or 40 or 60 amps instead of infinite amps through the wire, even though you're essentially shorting the battery. So it's very, very nice. Very good suggestion. I really do appreciate the commenter who made this suggestion to me. Let's take a look now at the results. You may recall from the previous test that I threw out the results of the 1800 milliamp hour packs because they were so similar that I was suspicious that I hadn't fully charged the high volt. And I'm, I'm still not sure about that, but I, the results in this test were also very similar. And I was very careful to make sure that the batteries were properly charged the high volt to 4.35 volts per cell and of course the lipo to 4.2 volts per cell you'll notice that the time is very similar between them 2 minutes 25 versus 2 minutes 28 suspiciously similar and yet the bolt did give more milliamp hours 1530 versus 1478 85% versus 82 percent capacity a small amount 22.7 watts versus 20 watt hours rather versus 21.5 watt hours so slightly more power same resting voltage, same sag, and interestingly, the bolt was a lot hotter at the end. I really don't know why that might be. The internal resistance of them is very similar. So I'm not sure what to take from that. I'll just keep that as an interesting data point, but no conclusions at this point. In the 1300 high volts, the differences between the batteries really are starting to show. Now, you may recall that in the previous tests, the bolt and the Mad Dog were very close. And I said that it was a little hard to justify the additional cost of the Mad Dog, 40 bucks versus 26 bucks for the Bolt, unless you just really needed that extra edge. However, in the 40 amp discharge test, we can see that the Mad Dog is starting to pull ahead a little bit. The time, again, is very similar between them. It delivered more milliamp hours, 1104 versus 1051, more capacity and uh, more watt hours. The Green Gorilla did not do as well in this test. The green, in the previous tests, the Green Gorilla 1400 have said it has an honest capacity rating. It has delivered close to an honest capacity. And I felt like the 1400 milliamp hour was not just marketing hype. However, in this test, notice that the milliamp hours it delivered and the time were significantly lower than the other two batteries. It hit the 14.0 volt limit sooner. And the reason for that, that it, is that it, it was sagging much more. 1.13 volts per set of sag versus 0.83 and 0.89 volts of sag. So of course, we stop the test sooner and therefore we get less time and less milliamp hours. And then it recovers to 15.12 volts, but who cares? At that point, you've already landed. I do want to comment a little bit on my experimental design here. Now, some people might say, well, that battery recovered to 15.12 volts. It had more to give. You didn't give it a fair shake. And I disagree. If you're flying and your battery is sagging to, let's say it's sagging to 13.5 volts. Let's say that's the point where you stop flying. Okay, so it sags to 13.5 volts. You back off the throttle, you limp it home, you land it, and the battery recovers to 15.12 volts. You're not going to take off again and start flying. You're going to change the pack. It's done. Whatever the cutoff is that you use, when your battery is sagging to that point, the fact that it recovers when you back off the throttle doesn't matter unless all you do is hover. And that's not what we're talking about here. So I feel like this is a valid test. Whatever your cutoff voltage is, when the battery hits that voltage, you're done. Maybe, maybe you could say, okay, well, I did a huge punch out and I hit 13.5 volts, but now I'm just going to do some little loopity loos and, and I'm not going to do huge punch outs and I'm going to get another few 30 seconds of flight. Okay, fine. Well, we're, th this is a 40 amp test. This is how much sag we had. You can use your own judgment as to whether you feel like this is valid, but I don't think it's going to fundamentally change the results of which battery is in first and which battery is in second and which battery is in third. Okay. 
What about the SMC versus the Bonka? Now, the SMC has been holding its own against this more expensive pack and has been living up to its reputation as a, as a value-priced all-star. How did it do here? The, the SMC did not last as long as the Bonka, 117 versus 124. It did not deliver as many milliamp hours or milliamp hour percent, nor watt hours, one fewer watt hour, and it had slightly more sag. The only place the SMC really shined was in the uh, temperature. It was at 122 versus 126. The numbers are pretty close, though. So we can see that across the board, the SMC did slightly worse than the Bonka. But it feels like the disadvantage of the SMC is, is more than it was in the previous test. And so I think we're seeing that as the amps goes up, the SMC sort of lags behind a little bit more a little bit more than the Bonka. Still a very good value, but perhaps a proportional value now to its price with the SMC coming in at $25 and the Bonka coming in at $29. If the Bonka is only $4 more, then if you get 5% better performance out of it, maybe that's worth it to you. I still feel like these results back up my general impression of the SMC, which is that it's a fine battery, but it's, I don't know why some people say it's an amazing battery. Uh, it doesn't seem, at least on the bench, to be doing much differently. A little bit worse, certainly not better than this, uh, this Bonka. And then lastly, we have the Green Gorilla 1100. And uh, this one it, it continues to really struggle with the tests that we're doing. This is a 36C rate. So now we're really starting to get into the range of what I feel like is the, the upper limit for most batteries, which is around 40 to 45C. At 36C, we got one minute of discharge, 583 milliamp hours, 53% of the capacity, and so on. Notice that the sag was really a limiting factor here, 1.37 volts of sag. That's a lot of sag. Battery recovered to 15.36 volts. Now, you should definitely take this into account when you're, when you're assessing these results. If you're looking at these small batteries, even on a small punch out, you could potentially get enough sag that the battery goes to your stopping point, but then as soon as you're done with the punch out, you're back, you're going again. Whereas on these larger batteries, it feels like you would need more sustained uh, current draw to really get it to sag to a point where the recovery would, would, would matter. So I feel like I want to give the smaller batteries a little bit more slack here comp when comparing them to the bigger batteries. This is a lot of sag, but we were pulling a lot of amps. We're getting close to 40C right and and on a copter that's flying this battery 40 amps might be like full throttle maybe f I've, I have a friend who flies a, uh, a 180 size copter and at full throttle it pulls like 45 amps so this would be a fine battery for that because you're seldom going to be at 40 amps and when you are you're probably going to back the throttle off pretty quick you come down to come back up to 15.36 volts and now you're cruising around again at 10 or 12 amps and you're just fine okay so this this 583 milliamp hour rating is being affected by the fact that the battery has so much sag and that may not be a realistic relative to what you would actually be doing with the pack you're probably not going to be pulling 36c but if you're thinking about putting this 1100 pack on a 250 or a 210 size copter uh you know and and saving a little bit of weight i think you would think twice because that copter is probably going to pull 40 amps more regularly 50 amps 60 amps maybe even more than that and this battery is just gonna just gonna die if you do that all of the batteries in this test in the 1300 size went over 125 degrees fahrenheit now none of them went into a range where i was like oh my gosh this is bad and since i've started doing this testing i've been checking my batteries when i land from a normal flight session they're they're in the range of around 125 they get up there uh, but so, so I feel like this is not unrealistic and not a problem, but I do think that if we were to go to a 60 amp or a 70 amp test, we would start to see, uh, we would have to start ending the test early because the batteries would get too hot. Now this is not with any cooling. So the, the batteries will be a little cooler in flight because of the airflow, but I still feel like we're getting to the range where much, much more than this, and they're going to start being unhappy even with airflow. I also think it's important to get a real world perspective on this current draw now you might think yeah sure i pull 40 amps when i'm flying but if you look at your actual current draw much of the time it's below 40 amps and it's only when you're doing big punch outs or or, or extended periods of high throttle that you pull 40 or 50 or 60 amps for a lot of the for the typical sort of 210 size five inch props you know you might think you're pulling 40 amps but like i 
Uh, how often am I pulling 40 amps? I don't really know. I'm flying. But if I look at these numbers, my typical flight time on a 1300 milliamp hour SMC pack is around 3 minutes 30 seconds. And in this test, we got 1 minute 17 seconds. So I'm clearly pulling significantly less than 40 amps a lot of the time. Now that's interesting to think about because if I'm flying and I go to do a big punch out and the battery sags, or if I do a drop over a tree, I do a split S and I'm falling and I need to catch myself and I punch the throttle to catch myself and the battery sags, that's when I need the power. And if the battery sags and I don't have the power, it doesn't matter if the rest of the time I could have kept flying. So it's really, we're really paying attention to peak power and sag at the end of the battery's lifespan. That's what really matters here. So I feel like this 40 amp test is indicative of something, even though in reality, you're often pulling less than 40 amps. Because the times when you're only pulling 20 amps, who cares? It's the times when you need to pull 40 or 60 amps that you really need the battery to perform for you. So these flight times are okay for comparing the batteries to each other, but they don't really reflect what's gonna happen in real life. And I think what really matters is which battery was able to continue providing that power and that current further into its, uh, into its discharge cycle. Now, all of this sort of comes together to help indicate that a battery that has less sag and gives more milliamp percent before the hitting the 14 volt limit and specifically has more watt hours, that's the big one. That battery is going to be performing better. At the end of the pack, it's going to give you more power, more punch without dropping its volts and making you stop and land. Okay. Let's go back now and let's just check the C rating of these batteries and see how they're doing relative to their C rating. Now these uh, 1300s are around 30 C and except, oh, I have a mistake here in my formula. 31, that one should be 31, sorry, forget that. Uh, but these ones are around 30C, these are around 22C, and this one is at around 36C. And how are they rated? Well, Green Gorilla honestly does not rate a C rating for his batteries, good for him. So we can, we can say that he's honest in that respect at least. The Bolt's rated at 65C, 80C for the Mad Dog, uh, 75C and 45C for the Nanotech. There's just no way that these batteries are going to get anywhere close to these ratings. They're already starting to show their limits. Now, what's a continuous rating mean? Well, my perspective is that you should be able to continuously draw that much current from the battery. Uh, but it's clear that if we were to continuously draw 75C from this Ponca, we wouldn't get anywhere near the rated milliamp hour capacity. So I think the best thing to do is to think of the milliamp hours and the C rating as separate things. You can have the rated milliamp hours or you can have the rated C rating, but not both at the same time. <laughs> and I think if you look at the amount of sag that we're going to see when we pull these these high C ratings, that you're going to see that it's it's so much sag that you wouldn't be happy with that under real flight conditions. Also bear in mind this is the continuous C rating. These batteries have a surge C rating and I don't even know what that means, 130 C I have no idea what that means because in a half a second or less, this voltage is going to drop and that's going to be it for the battery. Okay, that is it for the 40 amp testing. These batteries have definitely shown their metal. And I'm e having second thoughts of even going and doing the 60 amp testing because I think we figured out which battery is which. And I think we can see which way this testing is going to go. Uh, it's not going to get any better from here. But uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm sure we'd all like to see batteries blow up, right? I'm sure my wife wouldn't like to see batteries blow up. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching, and as always, happy flying.